What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are having a wonderful day out there. It is time to talk about Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company Limited, better known as TSM or TSMC or Taiwan Semi. You can go a lot of different ways when describing this company. But look, over the last year, stocks up 22%. Year to date, kind of gone flat. We'll talk about that at the towards the end of the video. There are timestamps in the description if you want to jump around to different areas of this video. For example, jump to the end where we'll talk about from a technical perspective with Taiwan Semi, as you can see, this stock has gone flat. Now, on today's show, the company just reported their Q3 revenue. They gave Q4 guidance. We'll get into those numbers as well. We'll take a look at that. The other thing that I want to talk about is just some general news, just in case you haven't been keeping up with Taiwan Semi over the last quarter. I will talk about what I think is the most pertinent news over the last few weeks and months that have passed. We'll also talk about competition as well, coming from all corners of the globe, and then we'll jump into these numbers as well. Like a lot of companies that are report from a foreign country, a little bit more difficult. We get one column with United States dollars. The other columns are in the local currency. We'll try to make sense of these. I'll try to help you out, see what's going on over here. And then finally, like we said, we'll get into this from a technical perspective. Company pays a $2 per share a dividend, and that's 50 cents per quarter. And that is a fantastic dividend, in my opinion, in a low interest rate environment. Now, the company did just report their Q3 earnings, and they're guiding to higher Q4 revenue that came in above estimates. We'll talk about Q3 here in a second when we jump over to the numbers. But what I want to talk about it as a little bit Q4 numbers. Before we even get into Q3, we're already talking about Q4. Revenue expected to come in between $15.4 billion and $15.7 billion. You might ask yourself, well, where did they come in this most recent quarter? They came in at 14.8. So we're going from 14.8 to the mid-15s. That's pretty solid growth. The consensus was for $15.3 billion. So they're coming in over consensus. Gross margins expected to be between 51% and 50 53%. Gross margins in Q3 were at 51.3%. So they're expecting those margins to maintain and operating margins expected to between 39 and 41%. The most recent quarter came in at the above that range at 41.2%. So they're expecting operating margins to contract just marginally, but gross margins to continue to remain strong. Now, Taiwan Semi is like a lot of chip makers out there in massive of expansion mode because we are seeing demand coming from all areas. And now I'll have comments here on my channel that says, hey, the semiconductor cycle is over. No, it is not over. It is over for companies like Intel, which are based on the last technology in chips that has lasted about 20, maybe even 25 years for Intel and saw that company grow its business. That old ASIC chip design is over. Okay, will they still make them? Them? Will there be products that still use them? Absolutely. I'm not saying it's completely over, but the boom cycle of that is over. And the chips that TSMC and other chip makers and designers are working on and putting into products, that is the future. And in my opinion, probably has at least a 10 to 20 year run. We talked about the dividend. The other thing that is happening with the amount of chip demand, which we'll talk about is coming from the auto sector, but also the computing sector as well as they move away from the old style chips. A lot of you are probably watching this maybe on a computer with an old chip in it. We'll talk about Apple's release that is upcoming here in the next week or so and how this is changing the game in terms of computer chips. And so obviously TSMC and a lot of chip makers out there have the ability to raise prices and they were plan to raise them by 20%. I think we see evidence of that in the financials, which we'll talk about here in a second. Elon Musk, obviously the CEO of and the founder of Tesla, puts a ton of chips in their Tesla auto automobiles, and he referred to the global chip shortage problem as just a short-term problem, while if you listen to the executives at Ford and GM, they are telling you it's a much longer-term problem. I'll let you decide which one you're going to listen to. New look at TSM next-gen orders show that Apple, AMD, and Qualcomm are emerging as its top customers. Apple is moving to its own chips. AMD is producing a lot of the same type of chips that Apple is making, and they're going to put them in Windows-based PCs and other types of computers. And Qualcomm is also making next-gen chips that are going to drive the next generation of 
computing products. And what are we talking about? Is Apple has an event coming up on the 18th. We already have seen the M1 chip. Traditionally, over the last decade or so, most Apple products, in fact, almost all of them, had Intel-based chips, which uses an old-style architecture to make chips. Apple, along with TSMC and a lot of other chip makers out there, have developed a new way to make chips that don't use as much energy, that produce far more power, and are cheaper, literally cheaper to make because there's less waste. That is the future of chip making. Intel's designs are the past. Apple's, along with their partners like TSM, are the future. And this next event on October 18th, I'm sure most of you won't pay attention to it. I'm sure most of you are more excited about the iPhone. But this next generation chip that are going into these computers is going to be absolutely phenomenal and is going to make HP and Dell and any Windows-based PC maker, they are quickly quickly trying to play catch up with what Apple is doing. You're already seeing Microsoft do investments into their own chips as well because they need to get onto the same chip architecture that Apple is on and has been on for over a year now. The other computing makers have to jump on board or Apple will just continue to gobble up more market share there. Again, you can argue with me down in the description below, but the data is supporting what I am telling you. Now, Global Foundries files for initial public offering. This is showing you that there's a lot of competition in this space. Look, when a company can raise their price by 20%. You've got CEOs arguing whether this is a long-term shortage or a, a shorter-term shortage. Well, you better believe other players will come. This is how you drive. This is like capitalism at work. When prices go up, other companies come in and say, hey, I can make that too. So you have these other companies that are filing for an initial public offering so they can get more money so they can start feeding more demand. There's every one of these companies is seeing exponential demand outside of like an Intel. And so they're needing to raise lots and lots of money. SMIC, which is another chip maker based out of China, is also building a 9 billion Shanghai chip fab with a capacity battle with TSMC. So they are seeing it from all sides. And then finally, the aforementioned Intel, their CEO met with President Biden about the administration, maybe not necessarily President Biden himself, to pitch big chip investment plans. So what is Intel doing? They're seeing this company invest $9 billion. Global Foundry is going to file for IPO and get a ton of money dumped onto their lap. Apple is absolutely feeding the beast over at TFSMC. And when we look at their financials, they're doing absolutely financial, f fantastic. And Intel is sitting here and saying, well, we got to play catch up. Let's go to the government and see if we can get some tax incentives or some free money thrown our way. That is what's going on in the chip business. Now, we're going to take a look at this just from a revenue perspective. Anytime you got these foreign companies reporting, it's a little confusing. We'll try to make it as clear as possible. In this column right here, we've got our most recent quarter. Here's where we came in at that $14.8 billion worth of revenue. We talked about how they had $14.8 billion of revenue. Next quarter, they're anticipating between $15.8 and 15.7 billion. That's in United States dollars. The NTD is called the new Taiwan dollars. And that's what the rest of this is in. And so we see gross profit came in here. We've got this 14.8 billion. Here's our gross profit coming in at $7.6 billion. You got 51% margins there. In the previous periods, we're sitting at 53.4%. So margins on the gross side were actually a little bit higher in Q3 of last year, but they slipped in Q3 down to 50, but now they're back up to 51. And again, I talked about how the upcoming quarter, they're going to be in that 51 to 53. Range. So they're holding steady there despite the competition and that type of thing. Taiwan Semi is holding up very nicely. Now, what you want, might want to say is how they're, or how, how they're operating expenses, okay? Came in at right at 1.5 billion United States dollars. Now we'll take a look. It was 40.8. This is in the new Taiwan dollar. 40.8. It went from to 40.6 to 41.7. So cost operating expenses have ticked up. But when you look at the revenue growth, 356 
372, 414. Those expenses are rising about what you'd expect, maybe even a little bit less than what you're seeing on that revenue growth side. So I love what I'm seeing here. Income from operations coming in at a cool $6.1 billion. We were, and this is in Taiwan dollars, 150 down to 145 now back up all the way up to 171 this company had explosive growth from income from operation again driven primarily by a little bit of margin expansion quarter over quarter but also keeping expenses relatively low in fact low from a percentage basis off of revenue that is absolutely fantastic we absolutely love what we're seeing here from a financial perspective over at Taiwan now, from a technical perspective, this company has gone sideways, and it's really easy to see what's going on. This stock has bottomed once, twice, three times, and then four times last week down at this $108 per share range. Now we're trading right at 112. That's still, in my opinion, the bottom of this range. Now, if you're bullish this stock, the top of the range is up at 125. So you got about $13 upside because we have hit our head once, twice, three times up here at 125. We even made pit stops down here and got rejected at about 119. I think the conundrum that a lot of investors have with Taiwan Semi is do I buy TSM? Or do I just go and buy Apple, which basically benefits from TSM's manufacturing capability and a lot of their technology as well? The other companies you could buy are AMD. You could also look at NVIDIA, which also uses TSM as a customer and as a supplier. You can invest in Tesla. So for me... Taiwan Semi, unless you have a very, very, very specific reason why you're absolutely in love with this stock, and from a technical perspective, it doesn't look too, it doesn't look too bad. We do have a major area of support, just four dollars lower than where the stock is, but the stock has constantly been swatted down, just four, five, maybe even ten dollars higher than where it's at. So I don't necessarily know where your upside is in this one. Whereas a company like Apple is likely going to gobble up a lot of investment if their next chip their next computer which features new chip a new chipset which we'll see on Monday I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic and I think it's going to take especially the chip geeks and the computer geeks out there they're going to be super excited about that probably rather do that so either way if you want to invest in TSM I think you'd have to build, you almost have to build out a whole portfolio. I think if you buy TSM, you probably want a little AMD. You probably want a little NVIDIA. You, pro you absolutely would probably want Apple. I know you're now stacking your investment up on that chip space, but at least with TSM, you're, uh, you're, Getting a pure play here where with Apple, you get a little bit of consumer, a little bit of that as well. And so I'd build out a whole portfolio if you're overweight or you're thinking about going overweight, a, a stock like TSM. I think you want to build out an entire portfolio of these stocks that benefit from TSM's capabilities. And you might want to go the the you might want to go the ETF route as well in those types of things. You can search for ETFs that have Taiwan Semi as a highly weighted portion of that portfolio. Hopefully you guys are doing well out there. We'll be back again soon with more. Good luck with your investments.